I've got my watercolor paints and then I've got our reference photo. So we're going to talk about the reference photo really quick. Reference painting, I should say. This was just a little study that I did the other day um, of a starfish. So we're going to kind of base it off of this, but I think we're going to have a few improvements. And we're going to, this is not going to be like a real, this is not a photorealistic painting. We're going to be kind of um, interpretively painting a starfish today. So it is okay if you have some watercolor texture and you have some like painterly brush strokes in there. That's kind of what we're going for. Okay. Uh, my YouTube channel is linked in my bio, so you can find it there. These were with Artistro paints. Uh, this one was painted with Artistro paint. I usually use my Winsor Newton paints for the paint and sip, just because I'm more used to them. And uh, I like using these a little bit better just because they are uh, professional grade, but you do not have to have professional grade watercolor paints. So I think we're gonna paint this kind of shape and this color, but we also might do another one so that we can kind of go back and forth between the two as we paint today. So I'm thinking I'll do one right here and one right here, and they'll kind of be next to each other on the paper. And that way we can go back and forth and we can do a couple different color schemes as well. So that'll be fun. So uh, first I'm just gonna go over my materials because I always get questions and then we'll get started with the painting. My paper is Strathmore watercolor paper. You can see the, let's see if I can show you the front. What the front looks like. This is what the front looks like. This is pretty cheap watercolor paper. Um, it does help to have watercolor paper. If I would really recommend you have watercolor paper and this is not very expensive. So this is a good spot to start with. My paints are Winsor Newton watercolor paints here. And then my paint brushes, I'm gonna go with these three are Princeton Neptune brushes. I would highly recommend these if you are looking for some brushes. These are great. Um, all of my art supply recommendations are linked in my bio as well. There's a tab in there called art supply recommendations and that has, sorry for the car going by, that has all of this stuff and everything that I've, a lot of stuff that I've tried before that I don't necessarily talk about in the paint and sip. So if you're looking for some recommendations from me for art supplies, that's where you can go check out. Okay, we're going to start by drawing out our starfish shape. So we've got our reference photo here. This one is uh, more of a, a round shape. The legs are a little bit shorter and wider. And I think we'll do this shape for one of them. And then I think we'll do one with longer, skinnier arms um, for the second starfish that we draw. So we're gonna start out with this one. And the way that I like to do this is just kind of maybe lightly mark out a circle of where you want the starfish to go, how much room you want it to take up. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Hopefully you can see a, the light circle there. And then we are going to start drawing out the starfish. So I just start drawing out these arms, kind of in a rough star shape. Don't worry about getting it perfect the first time. I would recommend just getting a shape down and then you can kind of tweak it um, as we go before we start painting. So again, this one's gonna be, this one's gonna have a bit wider legs. So you can see that is certainly not a perfect shape here, but we're just gonna kind of tweak it, change some of the angles here, and don't worry about making the legs perfectly straight. In fact, it's good if they are, you know, bent maybe to the side just a little bit because starfish aren't just sitting there perfectly straight all the time, you know? So feel free to kind of adjust the way that those legs are sitting. Let's see, something's wrong here. There we go. Mm, that didn't help. Sometimes it can be hard to get the right shape on this, but you can see I'm just doing several lines until I kind of figure out which one I like the best. I think that's getting closer. And then you can go in with an eraser and erase those extra lines. So don't worry about doing it perfectly the first time. It's, it's really hard to draw a star perfectly the first time, so. But we're getting there. Okay, that's pretty close to what I want. Doesn't have to be perfect. It shouldn't be perfect, in fact. It should be a little bit imperfect because that is nature. Here we go. 
Okay, I think that's good for now. We might change the shape once we start painting a little bit, but I think that's all right. Oh, there's something about it that I'm still not sure about, but I'm not sure what it is. So I'm gonna move on to the next one and then we can come back. And then once you're done with your shape, you can kind of erase that uh, outer circle just so you don't forget about it. And then for the second one, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna have a, a circle up here for where I want this one to go. And then for this one, I'm gonna draw some longer, um, skinnier legs. And this one's gonna be that longer starfish, kind of like this. This is what we draw out the circle, there we go. So you can see those are two different shapes. If you want to do just both of these, you know, if you want to just do one of the, these shapes, you're welcome to. Maybe I might curl this one over a little bit. And curl some of the edges of these legs. Again, you're just going to adjust your shape as you see fit. go. <laughs> You're walking right now. I'm bored. This will be uploaded to YouTube, so you can always go and follow along later. I've got other paint and sips there too, but I understand that feeling of wanting to paint and not having your paints with you. Okay, so once you've got your rough shape of your starfish, I want you to take an eraser and lightly erase um, these lines that we've just made because we don't want these pencil lines to be too strong. We don't want them to be too dark. We don't want them to show up too strongly at, in the final painting. So erase them so that you can still see them, but enough that they won't be super strong pencil lines by the time we're done. Okay, there we go. So there's our two starfish. Okay. Let me make sure, um, as we're doing this, I'm gonna try and go back through the comments and um, make sure that I haven't missed anything. Cool, okay. I do try to answer questions, but I have to paint and teach at the same time, so sometimes I do miss things. So now, we're gonna get started with our painting. And again, we're just doing this kind of in a light, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna lean into the watercolor effects today. So that's kind of our goal. The first thing we wanna do is take a paintbrush and get some water into each one of these watercolor pans. And this just starts to dissolve that paint and it makes it so that we can use it and we're not just dipping into dry paint. So you can use a spray bottle to do this as well if you'd like, but I've always just used my paintbrush to put a few drops of water in each. Okay. And before we get started with the actual painting, just want to, my usual like spiel is that this is for fun. <laughs> we are here to paint together and have a good time and, um, you know, have a little, little bit of a community, maybe learn something. And so we are just here to, um, you know, do that. We're not trying to make a masterpiece with this painting. This is an hour long study. It is not going to be a masterpiece. However, it doesn't mean it's not valuable. So make sure you are being gentle with yourself. And um, especially if you're new to art, just be patient with yourself, enjoy the process. Don't worry so much about how the painting turns out in the end. And yes, this will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. So you can always follow along later. And also please be nice to me and be gentle with each other in the comments. <laughs> Just have us be a nice, you know, relaxing place, okay? So for our first starfish, I think we're gonna go with a, um, this, this kind of color scheme up here, this yellow and orange color scheme. So to start out, we need a couple of colors. I think we're gonna do um, yellow and orange are gonna be those colors. So grab some yellow and grab some orange, get them ready in your palette. Whatever yellow and orange you'd like to use is fine. Water them down a little bit, but not too much. And what we're going to do is put a layer of water down in the starfish shape, and then we'll drop those colors in, and that will help them kind of spread around and mix together, and it'll give us these um, really nice kind of watercolor effects. So I'm taking my 
Let's see if I can move these things back just a little bit more. So you can see, taking my brush and I'm going to grab some water from my cup and fill in the starfish shape. Tilt your head, see the light reflecting off of the water so that you can see what spots you've missed. If you live in a dry place or if you have a fan going like I do, this water could dry a little bit faster than if you live in a humid place. So just keep that in mind. Keep in mind the general humidity of the place that you're at for how fast you need to work here. If you find that it's drying already, you can continue adding water until you have a nice coating of water over the whole shape. Okay, there we go. And then once you've done that, you can start taking one of your colors, it does not matter which, and we're just gonna drop those in. I like to focus on the sides. I'll show this closer up. I like to focus this on the sides of the shape, and you can see that once it touches the water, it starts spreading out like that, and that's what we want. So you're just gonna kind of touch it into a few places. I like to avoid the center and the sides just because those are the or the center in the middle, just because those are the highlighted spots. So we want the color to be concentrated on the sides. Okay. Then once you're done with your orange, you can move into your yellow and do the same thing. Just drop that in in a few places. You can include, sorry, I shouldn't say you should avoid the middle. You should definitely put some in the middle but make sure you leave some light spots too. Leave some spots that don't have any water on, or don't have any color. Okay, and that's all we're gonna do. If you find that, not all we're gonna do, but that's the first layer. <laughs> if you find that you have kind of covered your whole shape in paint, you can take a dry brush and pick up some of that extra paint. I'll show that to you in a second here. If I fix this shape a little bit. So if you take a dry brush and you put it onto this wet paint, it picks up some of that extra paint. So if you need to, um, you should be able to hide the comments. It's just a different motion that you have to do now. Um, people usually know it in the comments. So if you know how to hide the comments now, sound off. Um, yeah, so if you need some highlights back, use that dry brush technique and pick up um, some of that paint. There we go. So now we're gonna do the same thing with our other starfish. I think we'll do a different color scheme here. I think I'm gonna do like a blue purple, kind of like a lavender color scheme. I think that's pretty. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna grab maybe a blue and then I'm gonna make a purple color And we're gonna do the same thing where we fill the whole shape with water first and then just drop those colors in. So nothing, um, nothing super fancy, just exactly what we were doing before. Again, make sure you're just covering the whole shape. Tilt your head so you can see the light reflecting and you can see any spots you've missed. And then once you've done that, grab whatever color you wanna start with and start dropping that in there. should hopefully see the paint flowing together with all that water.
didn't realize it was you. I watch all your videos. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, so then I'm switching to my purple and I'm just dropping that in as well. And something to note about watercolor paint is that it does dry lighter than it looks when you first put it down. So just keep that in mind for any time you're painting with watercolor, but especially now. I already did the jellyfish one, good. What if you drop too much paint? Again, you can pick it up with a dry brush. So I'm using my, I've dried off my brush with a paper towel here, and I'm just gonna pick up some of that paint. Your YouTube name, uh, it's linked in my bio. I believe it's just Hannah Pickerel, but it's linked in my bio so you can find it easily there in the link tree. Okay, so there's our first layer of our little cute little starfish. So adorable. I'd love to know the colors in your palette. Uh, maybe at the end I can go over that, but I don't wanna, I do wanna kind of move on with our lesson here. Let me know if you are painting along with me, let me know if you're ready to move on or if you need a few minutes to finish up what we've been working on so far. Just throw that in the comments so I know where you're at. And also while we're, while we have a little pause here, um, feel free to double tap the screen. You can do it as many times as you want. It sends me likes, helps me out with um, the algorithm. So that is always lovely. What colors for the second one? I used blue and purple. You can use whatever colors you'd like, um, but I went for a blue and purple. Purple then blue, it doesn't matter which order. You can do either, either order because they're both going down. Oh, thank you so much. It's very sweet of you. Okay, so I'm seeing a couple wait a few minutes. So if you have any art related questions, feel free to ask in the comments. We're gonna wait um, just a minute or two for everybody to catch up and for these two things to dry, and then we'll move on to the next, um, we'll move on to the next step. And thank you for the likes. Look at that, we're up to 10K already. That's awesome. So let me know if you have any comment, or not comments, um, questions, art related questions. Thank you. Is this called wet on wet? Yes, that um, that technique that we just did there where we put water down first and then put the paint into it is called wet on wet. Best beginning watercolor palette. Um, I don't know if I can tell you like the best one because it depends on your budget. It depends on like any other art experience that you've had. Um, like I've said before, I have lots of recommendations in the link in my bio. There's a tab called art supply recommendations. Um, so I have some good recommendations of stuff that I have tried before um, at all different price points. So I would recommend you check that out if you're looking for my supply recommendations. Do you always mix your water or paint with water beforehand? Yes, almost always. Um, because it can come out a little bit clumpy from if you just dip your brush into the paint pan and then onto the paper, it can kind of be clumpy. So it's good to um, kind of water it down a little bit and smooth it out and then you can put it onto your paper. Are you using the same brush and just cleaning it? Yep. I was using uh, this four round brush the whole time. I think I'm using too much water in the beginning. Should I be using a smaller brush to put water? Um, well, it just depends. Um, and the amount of water is a question that I get a lot. And really it's just something that you have to practice with. Um, it's not something that I can necessarily tell you like, oh, this is exactly how much water you need for this specific situation. You just have to kind of practice with your watercolor and feel it out. Um, yeah. Where can I get my brushes? I got some from Target, but they're not good. Um, I do recommend your local art store. There, if you just do a little Google search, there are, is bound to be an art store or two in your area. Um, Amazon is, a, is an option if you don't want to, um, if you don't have an art store available to you, if you don't want to go to a store, Amazon is a decent option too. That's what my um, art supply recommendation website, oh, Jesus, bikers. Um, that's what the art, art supply recommendation website is. It is uh, Amazon. 
It's the most of a lot of likes that you've gotten on a live video. I think I've gotten like over 100,000 before on a live video, which is fun. But it just depends on the group. Yeah, don't forget to sip as well. I should take a sip of my water. All right. Thank you for the questions. If I didn't answer them, save them because I will prob probably ask again. But we're going to go ahead and move on just because I want to make sure I get all of the um, steps done on this so you can paint along with. Okay, so we're going to start adding detail. And the way that we're going to do this is kind of building it up lightly um, with a few layers. So I'm going to show you the reference photo here. If you kind of look closely at this, you can see that there's quite a few little um, layers in here of different varying strengths of paint. So we have kind of this really dark purple paint in the corners here with the shadow, and then we have these really light textures with the light orange. So we're going to kind of build up all of this um, until we get to these dark shadows. Hopefully that makes sense. The other thing to note is that the general pattern of the starfish that we're going to use is a circle in the middle and then these ridges kind of down the arms like this. That's generally the pattern of several species of starfish and that's what we're going to use to make this look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so again, a circle in the middle and then ridges down the center of each arm. Okay, so for this, we're just going to start building up the color. So for this orange and yellow starfish, I would recommend you use, you can use whatever color you want really, but I would recommend you start building up the oranges and the yellows into pinks and then purples for the shadow. So um, I'm going to kind of give you the freedom to pick your colors from there, but just any warm color that you want to use. And I would start by watering it down. We're going to start with our lighter colors and then work to the darker colors. And we'll just start kind of putting in some dots, little lines in here. Remember to follow that circle and ridge pattern that I just said. And with this watered down paint, we're just going to start putting in some shadows. We don't really need to worry about the light source right now because we want this texture to be kind of all over the starfish. Let me move this up just a little bit for you here. Okay. So this is kind of a watered down pink color. I mixed together pink and orange, and that's kind of how I made this color. Um, but again, any color that you feel like you want to use in the warmer range, I would recommend, feel free to start using it. And feel free to kind of mix up your colors. So now that I've used this pink a little bit, maybe I'll switch to yellow and continue doing what I'm doing. But that way we have some color variation. And that's the key. So you can see I'm just, I'll show you close up what I'm doing. I'm just kind of filling in with dots on the sides and then these ridges down the middle, starting to fill in this circle pattern on the top. Okay, you can see as this dries, it's not a very dark color. It's too close, there we go. Not a very dark color. So we're just gonna kind of start building up this texture with the lighter colors first. So hope that all makes sense. I am going to let you kind of, I'm going to give you a little bit of freedom to do what you want with your starfish. Give it as much or as little texture as you want with whatever colors you want. see if there's any questions back here that I should go back for. How long for your base paint to dry before layering? Um, it just depends on the um, it depends on the humidity where you are. It depends on if you have a fan going or not, stuff like that. Um, but just when it's not shiny anymore, that's when you know it's ready to you can move on to your next layer. Questions. Look at that, we're up to 20,000. That's awesome. Thank you. How often do you do leaves, these lives? I do these every Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. I will say now that next Saturday I will be out of town, so there will, only be, there will be no paint and sip next Saturday or next weekend. We'll pick it back up the following weekend. But generally, these are every Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. 
Okay, so real quick back to this. As we've gone around, I've added texture to the whole thing with this lighter color. You can see there. And we can continue to add texture like this as much as you want, but then once you have kind of done everything you can with that shade, you're gonna start darkening your colors. Um, and this is where we need to talk about the light source just briefly. So whatever you're doing, just pause for a second. We're gonna picture our light source is coming from this direction. So everything that is facing this way is going to be light, and then everything that's on the other side of this light source should be shadow. So that means this area here should be a shadow, this area here should be shadow, this area here should be a shadow. Anything that's facing towards the light source is gonna be light, and then anything that's facing away will be in the shadow. So you have to kind of start thinking about this as a three-dimensional object and picturing where that light is going to hit and where there's going to be a shadow, okay? That's kind of the general idea. And for the shadows, I'm just gonna start using some um, purples, darker pinks and purples. So maybe like this kind of a color first, more of like a magenta. And we'll just start building up the shadows like that. I don't recommend going directly for the darkest color. I recommend kind of building up those shadows slowly. With watercolor, you can't really go back and lighten anything. You can only darken. So it's good to kind of be cautious about how dark you go, how quickly, you know? Hopefully that all made sense. But you can see I'm starting to I make my colors darker, like red or yellow, because my colors are so bright. Start adding some blue, start adding some brown. Those are good ways to darken the color. It's also fun to add these little dots with these darker colors. Um, sometimes starfish have like these little freckles, I guess. Um, so you can add these dots kind of all over. And that's a good textural thing as well. So you can see I'm starting to build up the shadow in these corners where the arms meet away from the light source, kind of on the edges here. Shouldn't our texture be dry before adding the shadow? Nope, it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, that can be a cool effect where that shadow starts to blend into those textures. If you'd prefer to wait for it to be dry, you totally can, but I am not. Also, I'm kind of working in a circle, and by the time I get back to the beginning, most of that stuff is dry already. So if you kind of work in some sort of pattern, you should be able to get around to the beginning once it's um, dry. Or it should be dry once you get back to the beginning. Okay. And there we go. And now I'm gonna do my darkest color. I'm gonna do like a purple. Adding more blue. So you can see this is a pretty dark color here. Have you ever painted a carrot? No, I cannot say I have, <laughs> but I feel like that would be a good fall thing. I tape my paper down, but it still warps. Is this bad paper? Nope, watercolor paper will warp um, almost no matter what. Some brands will warp less. Sometimes it has to do with the quality of the paper. Um, and also it has to do with like how much of the painting area you're covering with water at one time. So for this, my paper isn't warping all that much because we just put water in these two sections really. Um, but if we're doing like a whole landscape painting and covering the whole paper with water, the paper will warp more. Um, I recommend trying out different watercolor papers. Arches is a great brand. It's a little bit more expensive, but it doesn't warp nearly as much. Um, so whatever your budget is, just feel free to try different papers and see kind of what works best for you. Um, but paper warping is normal. People ask me about that all the time. There is really nothing you can do to eliminate it completely because you're putting water onto paper and that's just what paper does. So don't worry about it too much. It is what it is. And once the paper dries, it flattens out more or less. So it is normal. So I'm using my darkest color here just to do these really dark shadows just on the edges here. Maybe a few little dots in the middle to highlight the circle. Have a little a few freckles there, you know. And you can kind of see this coming together. A 
love your painting classes. You've inspired me to pick up my brush again. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. I'm glad you've enjoyed. Okay, so while we're adding texture to this starfish, just my regular, I gotta plug my stuff because that's what I have to do. I'm a full-time artist. Um, my Venmo is listed in my bio and my PayPal is linked in my bio. So if you're enjoying this um, painting session and you'd like to leave me a tip or a gift, you can do that through there. Again, Venmo is listed in my bio, PayPal is linked in my bio, so you can use whatever you prefer. Um, that is always appreciated. My Etsy shop is also linked in my bio, so if you'd like to check out the art that I uh, create and sell, this is that is a good place to go. Holidays are starting to approach, so if you'd like to grab um, a painting or a bookmark or something like that for a loved one, or just for yourself, if you wanna treat yourself, that's a good place to check out as well. It means a lot to me. And um, let's see, what else? Patreon is in my bio as well. Art supply recommendations, check that out too. And uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel as well, which is linked in my bio too. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube and I'm at like 750. So if you feel like throwing a subscribe on there, that does mean a lot to me too. Again, that YouTube is linked in my bio. Okay, so I think I'm gonna leave that there for now. I'll show this closer up here. There's our starfish. I like all the texture. I like the way that the texture layers together and kind of looks all together. Thank you. Are you using the $7 brush from your Amazon? Uh, no, not for this one. I think that's the detail brush that you're talking about. I haven't, I haven't used it yet, but this is the one that I think she's talking about. And I love this brush, so I'd recommend a detail brush if you don't have one already. I use this all the time. Wait, for any art, is it a good option? Watercolor brush pens? Um, you can certainly use brush pens. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm trying some out right now on my own time, um, just because people have asked me to try them out, so I'm doing that. So I cannot give you <laughs> a uh, solid answer on that, but you should try out whatever you're interested in. Nope, no thunderstorms today, just sun. Sun and some clouds. Hopefully the, that cloud will cover the sun because that's a little bit bright. Okay, we're gonna move on to our other starfish here. Same pattern idea, we're gonna do that circle in the middle and the ridges down the arms. Um, it'll look a little bit different because obviously the arms are a different shape, but it is the same idea. So we're gonna start with our, um, and the same idea with the colors as well. Start with those lighter colors and move on to darker colors as you add that texture. Um, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna actually switch to my smallest brush now just because we need a little bit more detail. And we're just gonna start adding that texture. Um, I think for this one, I'm gonna use more like small dots instead of the larger dots that I used on this one, just because it's a smaller starfish, smaller arms, and I want it to look a little bit more delicate. So that's a personal choice that I'm making. You do not have to. If you want to keep doing the same texture, that is fine. But I'll show this close up what I'm doing here. I'm just using my smaller brush and I'm just starting to add little dots. Again, focused on the sides. We've got the ridge down the center and we're focusing the texture kind of on the sides. Okay. And look at that. We're almost up to 30,000 likes, you guys. That's awesome. Keep double tapping that screen. It does help me out. If you have those little um, tokens or whatever you like to, I'm I'm old, so I don't know what you're what the, what the word for it is, but those little tokens that you give out for lives, um, feel free to do that as well. That is always appreciated too. And as we're doing this, um, if you would like to send in any other art related questions or just you know life questions in general anything you want to know i'll do my best to answer so that this is the this is this very similar instructions to what i just gave you closer please i can't uh let's see if i can move let's see there we go look at that closer. You don't have to see the palette anymore. So there you go. Hopefully that helps. This is a new setup for me. I got a new, um, it's called a canvas lamp and it, uh, 
moves a lot more than the tripod setup that I used to have, so I'm still getting used to it, and it's nice. I have a lot more flexibility on that. So right now I'm just using this lavender color here to add the texture. I did the power pole painting yesterday. Would a black Sharpie be okay to use for the wires? Absolutely. Yeah, black pen, black Sharpie would work great. Do you have a YouTube channel? Yes, it is linked in my bio. You can find it there. I am trying to get 2,000 subscribers, so feel free to subscribe to my channel if you're feeling nice today. When is your next live? Um, probably in two weeks. I usually do these every Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern time, but um, I will be out of town next weekend, so. Thank you for hosting these. Always want to try watercolor. Yeah, you should do it. Go for it. I liked everything but my wires. Yeah, sometimes the Sharpie or a black pen is, is the way to go when you really need control like that. It is not cheating. Um, I do that all the time when I don't feel like a paintbrush has that kind of control for me. So, yeah, definitely try that out. What watercolors do you have? These are Windsor and Newton watercolors. I have quite a few sets of watercolors because I'm a full-time artist and it is, um, you know, now I can say it's my job, but it used to just be a sickness. <laughs> I would buy a bunch of art supplies. Um, so I have quite a few, but this one's my favorite. Oh, thank you so much. That's very sweet. Thank you for getting me out of bed to do something fun and relaxing for myself. That's wonderful. I'm so glad you are enjoying this. Hope everyone's enjoying. Is Etsy a good platform for creator payment? Um, there are certainly benefits and um, I would say some cons as well to selling on Etsy. Um, I am still on Etsy, so I can't really speak to any other um, platforms that are used, but the good things about Etsy are that they, um, everything is set up for you. It's incredibly easy to set up a shop and they take care of things like taxes and, um, you know, they do a little bit of marketing for you. I do most of my marketing for Etsy, but um, it's just very easy to set things up. Um, it's not like you have to build a website or, you know, do your, you know, take out your own taxes and submit those or anything like that. So that's all done for you. The cons are that they do take a, a good percentage of what you uh, charge for the price. So you have to kind of work that into your prices. Um, and the other thing that people kind of say is that there's not really as much name recognition. So if you were to say, like, you bought one of my paintings and someone asked you about it, you would probably say, oh, I got it from Etsy. You wouldn't necessarily say my name. Um, and so that's kind of a con if you're looking at really trying to grow a recognizable business, which I'm not necessarily, um, but that is something that people do mention. So those are my thoughts. Um, I would say if you're wanting to start an Etsy shop, it's a great place to start. So I would not say that... Um, I would definitely recommend you try that, but it's not the end-all be-all of selling things online. Starting to build up some shadows here with this, um, these darker colors, using some darker blues and purples, and maybe I'll throw like a little bit of red in there. It's good to add some contrasting colors. found you here on TikTok just saying, yeah. That's good. TikTok is great for, um, I don't want to say marketing, but like it kind of, a lot of businesses use it as marketing and it's a good place to, I enjoy it to be creative as well, but um, it is a good place to also help me make a living <laughs> off of being an artist, which is not the easiest thing in the world, I wouldn't say. So if you're looking to support me, help me pay my rent, <laughs> you can do that on my Etsy shop. I love the shadows and the wind on your desk. <laughs> that's my uh, tomato plant that's making those shadows there. It does look a little bit artsy, doesn't it? 
My tomato plant has spider mites, y'all. I'm really sad. I'm gonna have to get rid of it pretty soon. I love art, but you make me do it every day. Um, well, I don't make you do anything. I don't know you. <laughs> um, I don't do art every day. I don't recommend people doing art every day, necessarily, unless you really want to. Um, I think that it's really easy to burn out that way. So, I know some people really preach like making a habit out of art, and maybe that works for some people, but I think that if you do something every day, no matter what it is or no matter how much you love it, you're gonna burn out on it eventually. So, you know, if you don't feel like painting, I wouldn't say you should do it every day. Try neem oil. And the problem is, I so I used to have neem oil. I think I lost it in the mover. It might be downstairs, but I'm inside and I can't really like spray it very freely. <laughs> like I don't want to damage the the inside of this apartment. I'm in a. This is also my art studio, so I don't want to you know be spraying chemicals everywhere. And it's also most of the tomatoes I've already eaten. Most of them are gone. So and this is inside, so I can't really do a whole lot. Um, yeah, but spider mites are a problem around here in Cincinnati. All my plants that I've had outside at some point get spider mites, so it just is what it is, and I just take my losses. <laughs> Tomato plant had to go pretty soon anyway, so it's okay. What sort of things do you advise beginners to paint, like animals, plants, landscapes, people? Um, I generally, let's see. Usually for beginners painting, I was, landscapes are certainly an easier thing to paint. I would say that um, because you can kind of be interpretive, you can, you can do a really abstract landscape painting and it will still read to your audience as a landscape of some sort. So over, you know, painting people or something like that is certainly easier. But I would say that you should paint what you enjoy painting rather than just trying to paint like what is good for beginners to paint. Because um, if you are just trying to paint something because you think it's easy for beginners, you might not enjoy it as much. I think you should, you know, focus a little bit on what you really enjoy painting and work on that, even if it's not easy at first. If you really enjoy painting faces, that is not easy, but you should, do it. Um, making a good painting is not the goal there. It's, it should be enjoying what you're doing and, um, you know, painting something that you like painting. So that's generally the, the advice that I would give on that. And I would say that you should try out different subjects as well. You shouldn't just stick to, you shouldn't just stick to landscapes because they're easy. Um, you should try out painting people and you should try out painting animals, try out painting plants and practice doing all of that just to be a good, well-rounded artist, you know? You give great advice, I get bored easily, so I wanna do something different every time I paint. Yeah, me too. And I'd recommend changing up the materials um, that you paint with as well. I paint with uh, like four materials regularly and I have the supplies to do even more than that um, just so that I don't get bored with one. You know, I'll go on a kick where I'll really want to paint with watercolors all the time and then I'll get sick of that and then I can go to the three other mediums that I use um, frequently. So that's a good way to avoid getting burnout as well is to experiment, try different mediums. Don't worry, if there's no rules. You can try whatever you want. You can use materials in whatever way you want. Um, so feel free to experiment and just try out different things. Okay, I think I'm kind of overdoing this so I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> And we're gonna go back up here real quick um, so that we can paint in our sand. Um, wherever you're at with, the, um, with your starfish, you can leave it for now and you can always go back and keep adding texture, keep adding shadows. We're gonna go ahead and add some sand in here so that we um, you know, are on the same page with how you to do that. And the shadows on the sand, we're gonna do that too. So clear off some space on your palette And for the sand, we're gonna use a really light uh, yellowish orange color. My favorite thing to tell people about painting sand is that it should be lighter than you ever think it should be. So 
we're gonna take this kind of golden yellow color, this is yellow ochre, use whatever yellow you have and would like to use. There it is, and we're gonna add just a crap ton of water to it. You can kind of mix in maybe a little bit of brown to that too if you want, just to dull it down. Um, but mix in more water than you ever think you need to because you can always make the sand darker, but you cannot make it lighter. And I think that nothing ruins a beach scene more than bright yellow sand, <laughs> because that's what we do when we are kids. We, when we're coloring a beach, we will use the yellow crayon to color in the beach. And it just does not look, when you do that in a painting like this, it will look like a child's painting. So this is what I'm talking about. It should be so light, really watered down. Okay, and when you have that, I recommend using a bigger brush so that you can cover more area at one time. You can just fill this in and you do not need to worry about being super careful about the edges. This is a very light color and it will not really show up against um, the sand dollar or the, the starfish that we've just painted. So I would recommend just kind of moving with a little bit of pace so that you get a nice even wash and just cover the rest of your painting, the rest of your area, whatever area you want to use. Don't worry, sometimes it'll bleed a little bit, that's okay. This is a watercolor painting, it will happen. If you want to kind of loosely not really paint the edges, that can be a cool little um, stylistic choice. You know, once we get out to the edges of the painting here, I'm kind of leaving a few spots that are not painted. That can be just a fun stylistic choice if you want to. If you want to just fill in the rest, you can. or if you've been to class with me before, you can use that dry brushing technique that we've done before where you use the side of the brush and kind of let the paint break over the texture of the paper. That's an option as well. Okay, there we go. Sand, done. Sorry for the sh weird shadows that are happening here. Hopefully you can still see everything okay. I'm still working on an, a solution there. Hopefully that will come up and cover the sun. Um, all right, and then the other thing that we need to do is add in our shadows. So remember when we talked about which direction our light is coming from, it was coming from this way, which means we are going to add shadows on the opposite side. And this is gonna be the shadow on the sand, it's not the shadow on the starfish, um, it's the cast shadow, that's what that's called. And I like to use kind of a mixture of blue and brown for this. So I'm gonna make this nice dark blue here Maybe I'll have some brown. Maybe I'll add a little bit of green to that brown. Use whatever like dark colors that you want to use. I just recommend you don't use black. It's just a little bit more interesting. And I don't think we're going to wait for the um, sand to dry. I think we're going to do it however the sand, whatever state of dryness your sand is in right now, we're just going to go for it. And we're just going to start putting in a nice little cast shadow. Don't worry about it being perfect allow there to be some like ridges and imperfections in there. Maybe we add a little bit of blue or brown in there. There will be texture on the sand, so it is okay to have texture in the shadow, if that makes sense. And because we didn't wait for that um, sand color to dry all the way, it should bleed a little bit into the, um, into the sand. So it should soften up a little bit. There we go. So that's generally the idea of what we're going for. Feel free to add some little bumps and stuff in there. Doesn't matter. Just go for it. I find this so relaxing to watch. Good. I'm glad. This is relaxing for me to do. And we'll do the same thing over here. 
Again, whatever state of dryness it happens to be in is fine. And we're just adding shadows to all of the sides that are facing away from the light source. How did you do the shadow color? It's a dark blue and a dark brown. I mixed a little bit of green into the brown just to make it a little bit warmer. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of going back and forth between those two colors, dark blue and dark brown. All right, I think that's good. feeling fancy you can always add some little um one of my favorite things to do is add little uh what's it called paint flicks paint droplets onto the um paper that is always a good way to make it look like a watercolor painting so i'll show you and maybe we'll do that um i'm gonna take a really light maybe pink and orange mixed together super light water that down a lot and then i'll use that to just do a few artful paint flicks near this um, starfish here. I don't know, it just kind of gives it a little bit of a watercolor vibe, you know? And a little bit of texture around the, the sand, uh, just keep saying sand dollar, the starfish. So it's not just, you know, blank sand there. We could do the same thing with brown if we wanted to to give the sand a little bit more texture. Again, I recommend using really, really light colors when you do this. It will look better um, if it's light and subtle. And you can even take a, once you've kind of done that, you can take a paper towel and blot up some of those and make them even lighter so that they don't dry quite as dark. Kind of like that. So it just gives you a little bit of extra texture in there that I think helps. And I think with that shadow, it really makes it look a lot more 3D. Okay, maybe I'll do a few more droplets in the purple color over here, closer to this purple starfish. Again, remember really, really light, water it down a lot. You can always make it darker, but you can never make it lighter. There you go. I like that. I think that was a good choice. I, um, <laughs> there's very few times I can resist putting, uh, water droplets, <laughs> putting color drops on my paintings. It just really like helps. I don't know why. <laughs> I think it looks really nice. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take off the tape. If you're still working, you can keep working on that texture of the starfish. Um, if you don't feel like that is quite done yet, or if you feel like now that you've added the shadows, oh, I need a little bit more on that. You can always go back and do that. So you don't have to be done with your painting right now. Um, but I um, take off the tape for you. I do want to thank you for joining me. Um, this is always really fun to paint with you all. If you'd like to leave me a tip or a gift for today's session, that is always super appreciated. Um, any amount that you feel comfortable with, I've gotten anywhere from like $5 to $150. So whatever you're comfortable with. Um, Venmo is listed in my bio. PayPal is linked in my bio. So you can find those there. My Etsy shop is also linked in my bio. Um, so you can find all my paintings that I sell there would really appreciate if you check that out always means a lot to me and uh, my YouTube is also linked in my bio so if you want to go there please subscribe I'm looking for a thousand subscribers and this session will be uploaded later today or tomorrow to my YouTube so you can always um, check this out there along with all of the previous paint sips so make sure you sign your painting I'm gonna sign mine Right down here, get my pen. I like to put the date on my painting as well, 
just so that I can look back and see when I painted something. You can kind of see your progress. So today is the 27th. And this was paint and sip number 70. I do sell these um, paint and sip lessons. Um, I sell them 10 at a time. So the previous 10 are available for sale on my Etsy as well. And they're a little bit cheaper painting. So if you want a painting by me that's not super expensive, that's a good way to go. What do you recommend for a first time or looking to buy paint? Again, all of my art supply recommendations are in the art supply recommendations tab in my bio. So if you have questions about that, you can check that out.